Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete a slightly shorter episode as we complete the Captured Mining Facility assignment. In the last episode, we spent most of our time on board of the Normandy talking to our crew members, so it's time for some action, and that's exactly what we're going to get in today's video. And that's really all I have to say to get things going, so let's activate the galaxy map. Since we'll travel to another system today, we'll refuel the Normandy first, and thanks to the fuel capacity upgrade we obtained after talking to Samara, the Normandy can now carry a lot more fuel than before. For today though, we will only need a tiny fraction of it, as we now make our way over to the Zelene system. And before we begin the mission, we will take a quick tour of the system. We only have four planets to visit, so this should go quickly. Our first stop is Galon, a large planet surrounded by an even larger ring system. However, mineral-wise, it can safely be skipped, there is really not much to obtain here. Up next we have the rock planet Apho, and especially if you're looking for palladium, this one is worth a quick mining expedition. It has a few decent iridium deposits as well, so with a few probes you should definitely be able to fill up your mineral reserves. Planet number 3 is then called Nipima, Nipima, I don't really know, and this one is described as nearly habitable if it wasn't for a highly toxic atmosphere. Still, with tons of iridium available, you can get some worth out of this one, so if you're lacking that mineral, consider a quick stop. And that brings us to the fourth and final planet in the system, where ED will shortly detect an anomaly. I have detected an anomaly. Before we send out our probe, we can also learn that this planet was in fact once habitable. However, by now the atmosphere has changed and surface temperatures are also a tiny bit too cold. Our probe then reveals some mercenary activity inside of a mining facility, and it also confirms that we're dealing with the Eclipse mercenaries. So we know roughly what to prepare for, let's get to it. As our squad members for this one, we will bring Garrus and Miranda. Having Overload and Warp available against the Eclipse is always a good idea, and with these two, we have access to both. Just like in the last episode, we will skip leveling up Shepard for now, we'll wait until we have 4 squad points and then we'll max out incendiary ammo. With Garrus meanwhile, we have 3 squad points to spend and that's enough to get us the 3rd level in Overload, an ability that will be very useful in this mission. Miranda then has 4 points but will only use 3 for the next level in Warp, again an ability that is very handy against the Eclipse. Weapon-wise, we won't make any changes, there is some heavy weapon ammo available in this mission, but to be honest, we probably won't need it. So, here we are at the entrance of the mining facility, and after switching back to the assault rifle with disruptor ammo, we can venture inside. We run into a few bugs on the floor that can't be killed, and there is also nothing over on the left side of the cave here, so the only thing we can interact with for the moment is the cargo computer right in front of us. It doesn't give us a whole lot to work with though. We do learn that the cargo ship Terralan had docked and received some resources from this facility a while ago, and we can also read something about pirate activities, however nothing substantial yet that would explain the mercenaries' presence. Still, those mercenaries are exactly what we're running into now, and for a first group, this one is actually quite respectable. We are facing off against three standard Eclipse troopers, and their shields are the big reason we brought someone with Overload along, but we also have not one, but two Eclipse vanguards in this group, which is why I can only recommend the warp ability to get rid of their barriers. Now, unsurprisingly, the troopers fall very quickly, the main challenge in this fight is more the layout of the area. As you can see, there are two pathways ahead of us, one to the right and one to the left, and the enemies can come from both sides while in our current position we don't really have the best firing angle. This is of course nothing that will stop us from taking this group out, but it makes this fight a bit more tricky. And our mission has now officially become to investigate the Eclipse presence, so let's continue rummaging around. 
On this small intersection here, we will first take a turn to the left, because at the end of this small plateau over here, we can get our hands on some ammunition, as well as a crate of palladium. We can also see some kind of machinery down below, but we cannot interact with it. Making our way back, there is even more ammunition to the right of this locked door, but we're stocked full, so we can get right to the bypassing minigame. Right behind the door, we can then find a PDA, and this one shines a bit more light onto what happened. Apparently, the Eclipse mercenaries attacked the facility, and we can also read here that the facility workers were ordered to protect the main computer at all costs. Going to ground. Going to cover. So maybe we can find out why this order was issued. For now, though, we can take a position right next to the doorway here. And it also doesn't take long until we see the next enemies, and this time our position actually gives us a very nice advantage in the fight. Once again, we will be dealing with Eclipse Troopers and Vanguards, but luckily they will not appear all at once. Additionally, by keeping a fair distance, we reduce the effectiveness of their weaponry, while we can do some long-distance damage with our sniper rifle. There is also another reason for staying back here, and you might be able to notice it occasionally at the top of your screen. There is a single Eclipse Heavy with a rocket launcher hiding in an elevated position further in the back. However, by staying back here, the Heavy is unable to join the fight, and we can focus all of our attention on the troopers and vanguards. Once all of those are eliminated, we can then advance a bit further to take out the Heavy, which is of course a rather easy task at this point. However, the area is not fully cleared just yet, and as we take a turn to the right over here, we run into two more Eclipse troopers. However, they also don't pose too much of a challenge and are quickly taken down. Now in the corner over here, we can then restock on ammunition and we could also grab some heavy weapon ammo, but we're stocked full, so at the moment that would be a waste. Still, we should keep this crate in mind, however, it is the only one available in this mission. Moving on, we then want to focus our attention over to the left and find some cover quickly, because the third and for now final group of enemies is approaching from the other side. And by taking this specific route through the area, you can make sure to engage all enemies at a relatively safe distance, because it is actually completely possible to get swarmed and overwhelmed here. And by the way, while we're taking these guys out, I want to quickly address the interaction we had with Miranda in the last episode. Some of you have commented that you would like to see someone else become Shepard's romantic partner for the series, and I just want to reassure you that despite our advances with Miranda last time, I actually have not decided yet who our love interest for the series is going to be. However, as this is a completionist playthrough, I will try to explore as much of the romantic storylines as possible without locking anything in, so the flirting we did with Miranda will likely happen with a few other squad members as well. This just as a quick heads up, there is a very real chance that we end up locking in our romance with someone else. With this fight behind us, we now have a moment to catch our breath and to explore the area. We just collected a medkit and we can see it here, down to the left we have the aforementioned main computer. We will leave that be for the moment though, because over here in the corner we can find some extra ammunition, and if we continue to head down this way, we will eventually reach a bridge control panel. Extending this bridge will allow you to cross over to the other side and also collect some extra palladium, but at least for now it is important not to interact with the controls at all. Once extended, the bridge cannot be pulled back again, and that could actually become a problem down the line, so let's leave it be for now and hack into the mainframe instead. Next to the shipping log, which we already had a look at, we can now find some encrypted data here, which promises to reveal the location of the ship that last docked here. And since that might explain why the mercenaries are here, let's start the decryption process. In the bottom right corner, we can now see that the data is being decrypted, and while that is going on, we have more mercenaries coming in. In total, we will have to fight off three different waves here, and as far as I know, the first one will always come from this direction. The other two might spawn on different points of the map though, so you might have to move around to find better cover. Enemy-wise, we're fighting the usual, just troopers and vanguards. There will be one high-level enemy in the end, but all in all, nothing too dangerous. This next set of troopers here then already marks the beginnings of wave number two, and having them come in from the exact same direction is of course very convenient. Not only does it allow us to stay right where we are, but the doorway also works as a very nice choke point, and again, as long as they are far in the back, the sniper rifle also gives us a solid advantage. However, this distance might also work against your group, depending on who you have in it. Especially Miranda might not be too accurate with her SMG over this range, while Garrus should be serviceable both with the assault rifle and the sniper rifle as well. 
At the same time though, I don't think this fight right here is enough to require a complete overhaul of your group. Thinking about it, I would say someone like Thane would work very nicely on this mission as well, as he has access to both warp and a sniper rifle. All in all, I actually feel like Miranda has been with us on a lot of missions lately, so whenever possible I will try to switch it up in the future episodes. For now, we have survived wave number 2 and you might have seen him already. The Solarian Captain Vorleon, leader of the third and final wave, has entered the battlefield. As a response, we switch over to the missile launcher, not because it's necessarily required, but simply because we can restock it after the fight anyway, so we can at least expend 4 rockets here to thin out the enemy numbers a bit. As you can see, Captain Vorleon has access to a combat drone, however, if we play it safely, this should be the only enemy who will ever get close to us in this mission. We are of course once again lucky that this group also came from this direction, just like with the one before, it is absolutely possible for them to appear on a different spot on the map. And just like that, we're now down to only Captain Vorleon himself, and with both shields and armor removed, the Solarian doesn't stand much of a chance. For the kill, we'll then actually go with the punch and shoot combo, which gets us one step closer to the brawler achievement. And that's it, that's the combat portion of this mission completed, and as you can see in the lower right corner, the decryption process has also been completed. Before we leave, let's not forget to restock our ammunition for the rocket launcher, and then we can make our way back to the main computer to have a look at the decrypted data. Right, so I feel like this is a bit of an unfruitful end to the mission, because all we really learn here is that the decrypted data is incomplete. So we did all of this fighting to learn, well, nothing really. No info about the location of the merchant ship, no reason for why the mercenaries attacked. In my opinion, this could be handled a lot better. Still, we received 7,500 credits and have now technically completed the mission, but there is one more thing we can do here, and that is extending the bridge. Had we done this earlier, we would have given our enemies a nice way to flank us, so that is why I saved it for now. With the bridge extended, we can now grab the second and final palladium container, and then we can end the mission and get out of here. The mission summary is again rather uneventful. Yes, we have received the data and Cerberus will decrypt it further, but for now we have only defeated a group of mercenaries, but not really solved anything. Nonetheless, we receive 125 experience points, 7,500 credits and 4,000 units of palladium, and that's not bad at all considering the rather short length of this mission. And here we are now, back on board of the Normandy with the captured mining facility assignment completed. I hope I don't spoil anything when I say that this is in fact everything we will get out of this assignment. If you're now expecting a message from Cerberus telling us what they found out when they decrypted the message further, then I will sadly have to disappoint you. No such email will ever come. There is a news report that we might be able to listen to that reveals the final location of the merchant ship, but the reason for the mercenary attack will in fact remain a mystery forever. I think it's plausible that the Eclipse attacked to get into the facility's mainframe, probably with the hopes of revealing the ship's destination, maybe in an attempt to intercept it and to steal the goods on board. And while all of that makes a lot of sense, it will sadly never be confirmed, which is, again, a bit of a disappointing end to this quest. Nonetheless, we have successfully completed it, and that also brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, even if it was a bit shorter, and if you did, then I would of course be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course subscribe if you haven't already. Alternatively, you can also check out and maybe pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.